Right guys, welcome to part one of a RX10 Mark IV setup guide. It's also useful because a lot of these will work with all the other Sony cameras as well because the way the button layouts and uh, the way the menus on this age of camera uh, will work exactly the same. The only ones that it won't really work on are the A7S III, the new A7 IV and the A1. Everything else should be pretty much the same. Uh, obviously bar a few extra options and whatever in in there as well uh, so um, just quickly you have a star menu so if no one knows what the star menu is for you can basically add in uh, your own uh, personalized you know choices so every time I go out I put the card in I format it it's a good it's good practice I've never had a card fail in the last 15 16 years uh, or have corruption of any images. It's a good way of doing it. If you keep snapping and keep snapping, taking your card out, or copying off, putting it back in without formatting it, eventually you may get corruption. I have seen it with people with things like GoPros um, and other cameras where they've been on holiday and they've not taken the uh, card out and copied them off and they've just put them back into the camera and basically lost the whole lot or almost lost the whole lot. And I've used a few times with friends, I've actually used recovery software from SanDisk to hopefully get back most of the photos and I, I do it once or twice where we got 99% back and yeah they're very lucky so anyway that's what you can do and I've got a couple of other things like AF Illuminator I've turned off most of the time but I can turn it on quickly anyway so if we go into so we're going to do the function side of the camera so custom buttons is where we're going to start so if you go to menu and you go over to the second camera, which is the purple one. And we're going to go down one into the into the actual menu itself. And we're going to go right over to number nine. Custom key shoot is what we need. So go in there. And this shows us what all of our custom buttons do. So we've got uh, one, two, and three. One and two are on the top. And the one at the back is the rubbish bin one, uh, C3. You also can customize the wheel and, and the other buttons as well. So it's very, very good. It's a little bit limited in some respects. Some of the menus don't quite allow you to do what you'd love to do, but the later cameras like the A7R4, for example, does have a lot more customization. So obviously this camera is four years old now, so what it can do and what it does do is still uh, amazing. The control wheel, I don't use the control wheel for anything, but you can set that up if you want to for your aperture your shutter speed, stuff like that. But because you've got an aperture ring on the lens and a wheel up here at the top, you don't really need to generally set it unless you want to use it for ISO or something. But it's there if you want to use it. I don't use it. And like I said, this is my personal setup. It just may help a few people make a few decisions and learn how to set the camera up better. And then you can tweak it um, that might suit you better. You know, you just experiment, you learn from it. I've changed the menus and these things for years, you know, everything from back from Konica and Nolta into Sony when Sony bought them out, you know, similar sort of setups and menus anyway. So I have been playing around with them for a long time. And then obviously, depending on what you're doing, the type of photographer you are, you know, for example, if you're a, a wedding photographer, you're going to have a different setup to someone like myself who does a bit of everything. So I do a bit of sport, a bit of wildlife, a bit of portraiture macro and all that sort of stuff you know loads of other things as well so you know i my setup is going to be completely different to someone else's uh anyway so custom button one which is on the top just in front of the exposure dial uh and behind the shutter uh, button i've got it as focus magnifier which is absolutely brilliant it's such a handy tool to have and all the sony's have them i'll explain what that is in shortly uh steady shot Basically, I can just adjust my steady shot very quickly if I need to. Bright monitoring is basically night vision. It's a really, really handy uh, tool. I'm not sure how re well it really works on the, the um, RX10, but on the A7R4, it's incredible. It is, literally goes from dark to daytime. It's, it's nuts. Focus standard, which it basically allows me to push the center button uh, on the back of the camera, and I basically can move my focus points around, and then I can lock it again so it doesn't doesn't move anymore. Obviously, you can use the touch screen on the back. I turn the touch screen off. I don't use it at all. 
Um, you can set it so it's only half, so your nose isn't likely to adjust anything for you. You just use half the half the screen. But like I say I turn it off. Left of the wheel, so left hand side of the wheel, I can basically change my drive mode. It allows me to go from single shot to medium to high to low on burst rates. Next page. I, uh, right button. So on the wheel, the right button, uh, right click of the side of the wheel is ISO. My down button on the bottom of the wheel is deactivate monitor. So basically that is really, really handy for just shutting the monitor off and actually saving your battery power. So I always run the cameras in airplane mode unless I'm going to connect to my phone or shoot tethered or something like that. AEL button, don't really need it anymore because we've got a live um, exposure showing instantly all the time. So I don't never use AEL buttons anymore. So it's really, really help helpful that we can actually swap it over to AF, MF. So autofocus to manual focus toggle. So some of the older Sony's and Konica Minolta's when I used to use those had an AF MF button there. So obviously Sony knew that and they've left that option in there to set it as that. So basically you can, you can set it to hold, but I have it as toggle. So if I'm on a tripod, I just go, right, I want to focus on there, lock focus. So it's not going to move and it's basically ready to go. Register AF toggle is on the side button of the lens and basically you can swap focus modes which is really really handy in certain situations so imagine you've got it in wide autofocus which is how i generally have the camera for when i when it comes on is because i can basically turn the camera on zoom and aim at something and it's just going to lock on to whatever the closest subject is be it a bird an airplane or something like that it'll just literally go on it but if you're going to go into uh in between trees and, and things like that imagine this camera here is you know blocked by trees and stuff like here and here and here and you want to go through the middle but instead of going into the function menu and then climbing over here and then finding my focus area and changing it to small spot center or whatever you know I can leave it in wide I can literally just push the button once and it's now there we go straight into uh, medium spot if I push it again it goes back to wide for me it works really 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 well and um, it's something I use all the time uh, especially out with wildlife shooting and stuff like that if I go into if I push the side button again I can then push my center uh, center button on the wheel and then I can basically move that around as well the only trouble with that is if I do start taking pictures and stuff like that obviously it's sat in the center if I push it again it doesn't go back to uh, wide because you've changed and moved it. So it doesn't remember that for some reason. But if we go back in, uh, are we on there? You have to you have to make sure you go back out off that button. So you go back to what you used to be on, and then you can adjust the uh, back to wide again. But for me, 99% of the time, I'm not moving my focus points around anyway because I want to go into centre, so I literally just push it once. There we go. And push it again, I'm back to back to um, wide. So it works really, really well for what I need it for. Like I say, it works for me. Uh, into the manual focus, autofocus toggle button, so the AEL button, I've got it set up. And you can have it as whatever you want. It doesn't matter which button. You could use it as a centre one. You could have it as C3. It's totally customizable in that area, but I just use it there because it's right there. I can just literally go, Dunk. it's now manual focus. You can see the peaking, the red peaking, but I'm like, is that really in focus? I can't really see. So you push C1 and then you can zoom in. And then again, and then you can use your, your wheel to move around as well. You can roll it, click it, whatever. And it allows me then to fine tune the focus into position and I can click it and go back out and then basically we can take a photo it's really really handy but when you do that you need to go into the menus go to back to the camera one and then we need to go and find uh, about the manual uh, focus assist And then we need to have a uh, focus magnifier, which will just show me what that is. So we ignore that. 
but we have focus magnifying time it's basically I think it's five seconds it's normally on but I have no limit so basically I can zoom in and just leave it the other thing is you can have it you can set it at one times five times or whatever as the initial one but I just leave it as one so it zooms in a little bit and then MF assist because when you're in uh, manual focus assist that is on and it zooms in automatically and it's really annoying so I turn that off as well and then my peaking level which shows you what is in focus and out of focus I leave as mid and I have it as red because red's quite obvious to see so yeah it works really really well uh, for what I need anyway and like I say you can just zoom in and then zoom in again up to 10.7 times on the sensor and it just helps you do it you know so yeah um, like I say we've got bright monitoring as well which is another thing you need to be in manual focus for it but imagine it's dark in here so I'm just going to cheat and say you know it's really dark in here um, in fact actually I will turn the lights off let's, let's do it a bit properly so it is actually darker so you can actually see around the outside of the camera there I'm just going to shut the blind as well so it's actually dark enough that I can't physically see the um, the writing on the camera I can still kind of make out the camera uh, itself and I've set it up as C3 so I have to be in manual focus if I push C3 I can now see perfectly in the dark it, uh, it's basically designed for um, setting up your shots in the dark low light stuff allowing you to focus manually on things I'm not sure how well the RX10 works I've not really tried it in in uh, low light as that much and I need to start doing it now it's autumn I need to get out and do some but then you push it again and it goes away it's not the fact that you know we can't make it appear because I can make it appear if I set it to 10 seconds for example or 8 seconds I can now see it pretty well but the fact is if it's if it's showing that much I can still push it and it gets even brighter see but if I only really want to do maybe a a one second exposure and then run a torch behind the camera for example I might not be able to I need to then adjust the camera back up and down so basically be able to push the bright monitoring button so I can see you nice and clear is actually really helpful so the bright monitoring thing I use quite a bit especially on the my a7r4 camera when I'm out and about in the dark but I am starting let's say I'm going to be doing some more stuff once we get some clear weather it'd be nice some stars and things like that and see what we can really do with it in low light so yeah bright monitoring uh what else we got the stabilization button just allows us to go through different modes uh, i've got it set up there anyway so basically if i need to swap it over to intelligent active stabilization when i'm shooting a bit of video it's almost not gimbal like it's just a lot steadier so basically if i'm walking around it is a lot steadier and it crops in a little bit which allows obviously to use the sensor as a bit of stabilization as well as the lens as well i generally have it on standard or off the only thing with the intelligent active is it only works on 25p and 50p not on 100 or 4k because obviously it needs the extra bits of sensor to um, be able to work properly and obviously remember it's technology from four years ago but imagine the a7 IV now has intelligent active stabilization so they've taken something from this <laughs> four years ago and obviously made it better, um, but interesting to see. So how well that actually works on an A7 IV. Um, yeah, so that's basically the, the basic setup of the camera. Um, even though it's dark now, not open the blinds or anything, but it works really, really well. Um, for me anyway, set up like that. I This is obviously a new camera and I can't remember everything I, how I put it originally. Uh, on the first one but I have modified a couple of different changes now to suit so I might be changing a few other things but at the end of the day those menus are there to be tweaked and you know if whatever you decide you want to do with it do it you know if it helps you get the photos or the video or whatever utilize it and set it up as you want it uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well hope you found it interesting uh, if anything else you want me to do any questions on the RX10 Mark IV or any other cameras from Sony feel free to ask i can try and assist um yeah so part two is on its way uh apologies for the first first attempt at it it just went all completely wrong with the hdmi cable and everything uh, and something to do with the audio as well so hopefully this is a better way of doing it i know it's just video in the back of the screen but 
you know, it gives you a real world kind of look at it, doesn't it, at the end of the day. So I will be out soon with it, um, just waiting on some decent weather really. And uh, that's that. So watch out for another video very soon and uh, take care.